Sexy People Podcast, I'm Dan Frigolat. Uh, I'm your host. I'm here with my guest, Brad Party. Thank you for being here. Hey, happy to be here. Wonderful sweatshirt. I love it very much. Thank you. <laughs> Are you a Nick kid? I am, yeah. <laughs> Were you a Nick Jr. kid? No. Uh, nope, I'm just Nick Nickelodeon, the old school. So I'm, like a, I'm a little older than you. So what happened was somewhere... And this might have something to do with like the cancellation police and whatnot in a, in a different way, but somewhere in the middle of Nickelodeon already being a children's network, they decided that they, they needed to branch off and make other programming for younger people. I think yeah. there was probably a period of time where like parents got mad that like the Looney Tunes was too real. And uh, <laughs> I know that was on Nickelodeon, but like, I like, so then there was like this Nick Jr. thing. So then it was like cartoon within a cartoon. So it was like Muppet babies and all this other crap. Um, yeah. So I'm just realizing right now, talking to you, that that was terrible. It was. It was awful. <laughs> the, the originals are the best ones. I'm glad you didn't have to go through what I went through. Um, all right. So uh, this is a new thing I've instituted. Um, you're just going to brag about yourself for like 30 seconds. That's what I need. Okay. Um, brag about myself. Gosh. Tell me everything that I should know about you um, besides your, your Twitter bio. <laughs> besides my Twitter bio? Um, <clears throat> well, uh you know, I came on the scene before COVID, and uh, so that was right, like just put a kind of halt to my career a little bit. But um, you know, I have been nominated a couple times for a few awards, so um, you know, I'm pretty proud of that. To brag about that, I guess. Sure. Um, all right. So you are you are a um, you are a how do we how do you how do you define yourself? I think porn is like a weird um, antiquated word now. You are a performer. Yeah. Um, yeah, sex worker, performer, um, sometimes I'll say model. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't see why not. Uh, have you yeah. ever, have you ever called yourself a porn star? Um, I have had people call me that, but I would not say that. <laughs> That's what I found with the thing. The old name yeah. of the podcast was porn stars are people. And I was getting more pushback from the performers than I was from like the audience. And I thought that was fun. Yeah. It's like it's like you, you kind of had to like you had to like start in like 1995 and like do, and like work on film to like to like now be 40 and then say I'm a porn star. So everybody who's got in after that is just like no no I'm just a I'm a like cam artist or a sex worker. I'm glad that we are owning the sex worker uh, category. I really do. Yeah yeah definitely. Yep. Can I yep, ask I'm you this? Um, where are you at? Like, how long has your transition been happening, and how do you feel about everything? Um, I started transitioning about ten years ago, so it's been a long journey. Um, and I feel very comfortable with where I'm at now. I don't plan to have uh, any further kind of surgeries or anything like that. I'm pretty happy with my body. I mean, I've been trying to go to the gym, lose that COVID nineteen. Sure. But, um, <laughs> But other than that, no, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at now. So about two years. To, I have to ask the obligatory, um, dumb, straight, cis male uh, thing: um, Is there a point when you're done? Is the has the is the is, the, is there a transition that's complete? Um, I mean, we we can get a little bit um, like outside the realm as well. Like like, are you ever done evolving, really? But what's your what's your part? What's your take on that? Um, I don't think people are ever done at all. Yeah. Ever. So um, that's my stance on that. I personally like, I feel like I'm like, I'm done surgically and like things like that. I have to take hormones for the rest of my life. Sure. Um, and I, and I, I mean, I, I will, but I mean, I have to, um, but I think that I'm always even evolving. So like, you know, um, my, you know, my clothing style evolves and like just how comfortable I am in general with myself or things like that. Or like, you know, I think that everybody's just always evolving. So I have this weird, I have this weird thing. I remember when I was like, I grew up watching like Saved by the Bell and some of these terrible um, type shows. But I remember always thinking that like the perfect age, the place I wanted to be was like 25. I thought like that's when I was going to be done. And that's when I was going to be a perfect person. Do you have like a perfect age? in your mind as to where like everything will be exactly where it's supposed to be. Oh man. I would have probably said 25 too. <laughs> I thought it was on top of the world at 25, you right. know, and I don't, I don't think that there is a perfect age. I think that as you get older, life just gets better. 
So it just continues to get better and better until I think there's a point where all of a sudden your body's working against you. That's not so great anymore. I'm that's where I am right now. I want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to play. I was uh, I was like coaching flag football last night, and then they like we didn't have enough players, and my, I'm the older age group, so they're supposed to quarterback on their own, and I start. I had to quarterback because we didn't have enough players, and then uh, by the end of the game, I was like, I felt like I felt like Brett Favre. In like his last year, I was like, I don't have anything left. I can't even pitch the ball to these 13 year olds. I'm finally at the age where, yeah, like I can't even tell what my body's doing, but it's not, it's not, I think I'm devolving. I think that's where I'm at. And I'm happy with that. I'm happy to devolve into it just into a puddle. That's where I'm at. I'm starting, I'm I'm on puddle transition now. (laughs) Yeah. I felt that coming and I was like, you know what? No, not with the way that I I like to stay active and stuff. just sex but in life and i was like i can't let myself just evolve i gotta i gotta try harder with myself yeah for sure okay so you said you um you've been transitioning 10 years how long have you said you just started in the industry right before um the pandemic so you were like you were like let's go i'm in this i'm starting to make connections i'm starting doing it i figured it out and then the world shut down yeah yeah i honestly i fell into it on accidents and i didn't even know that i was gaining popularity in the porn world I was just kind of um, doing my own thing and then I got like kind of brought into it and then I really enjoyed it. And so um, I really started to like push forward again and then uh, COVID happened and uh, and I definitely was like, well, I'll just barricade myself inside as most of us did. And and uh, yeah, it really put a pause. On yeah. Everything. Now, did you I mean, I, I thought it was interesting because I've been doing this podcast. I knew that this whole thing was headed towards camming and creating your own content. And and that's when those were the people that were like starting to be really su- successful right before the pandemic. So like, I remember when it first happened, like as a comedian, um, when, when the pandemic first hit, I was like more worried about comedians than I was about perf- like uh porn performers. Cause I was like, Oh, they're going to be fine. Like I didn't even know that only fans was going to get to the place that it got to, but I knew that everybody was going to figure out on, on that end how to self cam and do all the fun stuff on their own. Um, oh, definitely. Even I was having fun during the pandemic of like camming, like making videos with other people and like putting those together via long distance and stuff. So, is that right? Yeah, yeah, we did. I did a film with uh, like it was like 17 other trans men. So it's the I mean, technically, it's the largest trans man film that has been made yet. So wait, so we did it all long distance. So what was the wait? So then what was the, how what was the content? How was it interactive? What was the thing? Uh, so there was this trend on TikTok where it was like you drop a makeup brush and the next person catches it. Yes. And so we did that, but with dildos. <laughs> and, that, and that song was like my favorite song for like the tail end of the pandemic. That song was so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just did that with dildos. We would just toss a dildo from one to the next. And then I just put it all together as one film. I just instructed everybody what I needed them to do and for how long I needed them to do it. And then I just made it one really long film. Wait, so uh, so you didn't even add it to TikTok because at the time TikTok was doing what thirty second videos. So oh, you were like, forget yeah, that. I'm just to TikTok. <laughs> How long was yours? Oh, it wouldn't have worked. Like like forty minutes, forty five minutes. Hilarious. Yeah. And just like great cameos. Yeah, yeah, uh, just uh, people that were well known all the way to people who weren't known and they are known now. So it's, so for some of them, that's kind of where they got their start. Yeah. So Wait, I kind of was the person to give them their chance, sort of. That's fantastic. And then how, so how many people you said? Uh, like 17. 17 people. That's fantastic. Yeah, I had a lot more than that that wanted to do it, but I had to dwindle it down because I was like, I can't have this film be like hours long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, so uh, that's a good question. Is what, what does it, what can't, so if you did it with the dildos and you just made, and you made like a dumbed down version of it, would TikTok flag just uh, a dildo showing up on camera? Do we know? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, they would definitely flag flag a sex toy. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, and they were using those sex toys. Right, so, right, right. You know, that would be flagged for sure. But yeah, the dildo itself would get flagged definitely. So was that the idea? It was like a, it was like a use it and pass it on kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it fantastic. Was like, it was like one one dildo to rule them all. Kind of, I kind of like did a play on that, and it like starts out really like dramatic of this dildo going on this trip across okay. the world with all these trans men. Oh, that's great. Wait, so yeah. um, so did you guys find like like as close to a proxy or we're just like, it doesn't matter. It's the one you have. It's the one I have. 
Uh, yeah, I did have to find them as close as they could to the same dildo. Yeah, but there there was a couple where it was a little bit bigger than the, than the <laughs> one before. It's like like in your head, it's like no, the person's smaller. Obviously, the person's smaller. Yeah. It's did, not uh, close, did, yeah. Did, what did you call this film? Um, I think we called it um the tra- Oh man, I don't even remember honestly. Can God. we still get it? Yeah, absolutely okay. for sure. I'll have to tell you what it is later. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, because I did I did a couple more and stuff. I was trying to keep busy during the pandemic. Yeah, everybody was busy. You know, we all got super uh, creative all of a sudden, and then and then so it started on on doing the TikTok trends, and then we were like, we're better than this, and we started doing our own yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> what an odd, what an odd period of time, but what but what a good period for um, creativity and drive. Like, I can't remember all of the moments, but I know like each time we thought something was going to reopen, and it was getting worse. And then like as a as a skeptical person already, I I I legitimately thought we were never going to open anyway. But then there was people that yeah. like really thought it was going to happen, and then we'd get closer, and then we'd be like hitting all the number one numbers every day, and then finally and then we'd be like, okay, I guess we're not going to open. So we kept hitting those transitions where it's like, um, we're not opening. We have to like really hunker down and like get good at whatever we're going to do because this new world might be forever. Um, Right. So that way, I'm, I think we can all uh, relate to that scary period. Um, yeah. What did you learn about yourself during the pandemic? Like, what was a new skill that you didn't know you had? Uh, a new skill I didn't know sure. I had? Man, I don't think I learned it. I learned how to watch more TV. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched way too much TV. No, really, I tried to, like, be more outdoorsy. So did you? Okay. I, learned, I learned that I could, I can still keep up with uh being outdoorsy so that was kind yeah. of and you, what i did during the pandemic and you're where you're where you're in vegas yeah and you were there then yeah yeah so i would travel to like california or new zealand colorado utah i just kind of drive all over and kind of uh, just get outdoors yeah you Go went to kayaking. new zealand during the pandemic new Ze- no you say new zealand <laughs> no colorado arizona oh, utah oh they just wish- wedged new zealand in there are, are you yeah, a casually, hiker? Yeah. I am, yeah, yeah. Those are all hikey places. Yeah, they are. You know, there's a lot of places to hike in Las Vegas, though, too. We have a mountain, so. I have like, a what? fantastic story of trying to go on a first date hike uh, in Vegas. I really didn't know all the things. So I went to Red Rock, and I guess my date took uh, doubled her dose. And so on the way out of the hike... She like started becoming less and less responsive, <laughs> and so by the time I got to the car, she was full KO, and oh, we drove no. her car, and her car had one of those blowy um, DWI things on it that of I course. couldn't figure out. <laughs> and then I had all of the I had all of the like fears of being of being like um, white male cis straight of just like you're they're gonna think that I drugged this girl. Oh, and then I sure. did this and yep. then I'm then I'm responsible. So I like I had to stop at like a Dunkin' Donuts and like and like go through her wallet and like figure out how to get her. It was the scare. Like there was a couple times where I was like uh, so I'm like I was like I was like locked into being a good person. But then I was like maybe being a good person is just leaving. Like like I kept having these things where I'm like I'm not going to leave her here. <laughs> but it feels wrong also to drive her home. Like everything felt like the wrong thing to do. Oh no. <laughs> I mean I guess you could have just like joined the party, lock yourself in the car, and just ride it out. Yeah. Well, I could. Have, I didn't know what she did. So at the time that she's passed out, I have no information. Oh right? no. So I don't know that she just doubled her dose because she was nervous. Um, I j- I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't. I'm like, and I'm just going through it. I'm having. I'm having my own crisis in her crisis. So I drove her home. Uh, she eventually woke up. Everything was fine. And uh, and then she took me to dinner for being a good person. But uh, that's not as fun of a story. <laughs> but the scary right. part was scary. But no, Vegas is a fantastic yeah. place to hike. And I have some of my best pictures from Vegas. And the, and the goddamn sunsets out there are unreal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. They, they're almost like Arizona. They, they are really great. Yeah. 
yeah, we even have like there's a hot springs and stuff here that you can go swim in. So yeah. lots of really cool stuff here to do. Crazy. And then what's what's funny is when I would be on uh, the dating sites out there, people would be like, "Don't ask me to hike." So apparently, it's a thing that like. There's like there's like the 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 butter side up and the butter side down. Just people that really want to hike, people that have no interest in that. It's too hot, honestly. It's yeah. just it's so hot. Nobody wants to hike in the heat. Even if you go to the mountain, no, nobody wants to. So yeah, I definitely I love going hiking and I love um, I love filming outdoors too. So sure. I like to try and make the opportunity as you know, two birds one stone. And everybody's like, no, it's one or the other. It's too hot. I can't do both. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, actually, that is funny because that that is come to think of it, that's a lot of the content that I've seen because half all of the people that I know in Vegas are making films. So that's what they go. They go on the hike and then booty's out all of a sudden. You're like, what? Yeah. I thought, <laughs> Just take this photo real quick. All right. Yeah. It's so, the way to go. You got wait, the what? natural lighting. I mean, it's perfect. <laughs> wait, why'd you compare it to Arizona? Is Arizona where you're from? Why is that? It seems like Arizona is more dear and dear to your heart. Um, you know, my husband is from Arizona, so we go there a lot. Um, so I think that's why it's become really near and dear to my heart. Fair. Fair. Where, where did you grow up? I grew up in Northern California, up in the okay. mountains, like the border of Oregon, basically. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, it's so way up there and you're nothing. So that's probably why I really still love hiking. Yeah. Well, yeah, you got all, you got all the good nature out there. Oh yeah, definitely. I would love to settle down there one day if California stops becoming so expensive. Yeah, well, everything needs to stop being so expensive right now. I'm on I'm on the um just get a plot of land where nobody lives and just build something. That's where I'm at. I'm in Yeah, the, yeah I'm in that's the... been my plan for a couple of years. No I No kidding. I, yeah, I've been saving and and uh researching it for a while. In fact, um one of my really close friends, Mason Lear, um he is is so in love with the idea too. He's also looking at buying plots of land and stuff. So like I'm getting my friends into it too. Like yeah. this is this is the way to go. I think this is the future is just owning our own little bit of land and yeah. building our own home. Yeah. I, I had, a, <clears throat> I was obsessed with, um, uh, uh, container homes and I'm, I'm still, I'm still about it. Um, but I just saw my vision. I'm still talking to, I still, I try to, as an adult, uh, grown, a better person, evolved person. I try to stay better friends with my exes. So one of my recent exes, on her vision board was a um, as a container home, and as I got converted her, um, what's your what's yeah. your, so what yeah. do you envision on your thing? What's what's your plot going to be like? What's your house going to be like? And then what else is there? Cows? Is there is there cat? Is there like a lot of cats? Are you growing things? Are there greenhouses? What's your what's your vision? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna farm. Definitely. Okay. I want to farm. I want goats, chickens. I want, yeah, I want the works. I may move up to a cow one day. I don't know. Move up to a cow. Um, move up. You got to start small, you know, like, <laughs> and then you move up. Uh, and I, I feel like, I feel like that's such a, um, it's such like a, um, like a, like a creator uh, idea. Like you got to start small and then eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like my first home on the land is yeah. gonna be probably really shitty, and then and you start small, but then you, you the next house, and that's that's probably like the house, you know that. You okay. Really you're like so, a you're like a test you're like a test it, uh, test it out and see how it goes kind of person. Yeah, yeah, which I did. I did that during the pandemic. I actually I bought an RV and we kind of traveled in a couple of states for a few months and just kind of lived off the land. We lived in a tent for a few That's days. a skill. How dare you keep that from me? I said, what's a skill you learned in the pandemic? And you you like figured out how to we grow to and kill land. rattlesnakes <laughs> and like do an RV. And you're like, no, I didn't learn anything. Get out of here. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I guess I did. Yeah. yeah we, <laughs> I That's because a whole bunch of outdoor skills. Yeah, I was try. I kept trying to. Um, I kept trying to to grow everything I could, but I don't have like nine months patience. So I'd like start growing garlic, and I was like, forget this, and I would just like pull oh. it up. But um, wait. So how far? So can you can you build a fire from from scratch? Yeah, yeah, definitely. No a couple kidding. different ways. For no sure. kidding. Okay, wait. Yeah. So which ways can you do fire right now? I uh, I can do the all stick method. No kidding. Uh, you can do the stick with the string. Um and of course what's that I called? That's called bow and bow and uh bow the, drill. Yeah, yep. And uh, I'm I'm better at making campfires, honestly. Yeah. yeah. So we've discovered, you know, like you dig this nice hole, 
uh, to make a good airflow for the campfire and stuff. There's also like how to space the people apart at the campfire so you don't get smoke blowing in your face. Is that right? There's a way to do it? I've all, I, I keep being right the person who gets the smoke in my face, yeah. Yeah, no, there's the right way to do to, to like when it comes to camping and outdoors, somebody somewhere has already thought of five different ways to fix your issues. So, yeah. Or five hundred ways. I don't know. No kidding. So, yeah, okay. yeah. So it was a ton of fun. Like we would like make our own little pottery out of clay. We'd like dig in the dirt and make clay. I tell you, I think my favorite part was on <laughs> Honestly, it's just like getting to wake up in the morning and just, you know, you just like see the sunrise while you take yep. a dump or yeah. you can just have sex outdoors or something yeah. like it, it's just fantastic. Thank you for bring, bringing poo into it. We hadn't talked about poo yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, why not? Everybody poos. Might as well talk about it. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, no, there's just an, there's like a sense of accomplishment. Um when when you when you sleep outdoors or like or set up a camp because it's like even the the temporary nature of what you've done you like wake up in the morning you're like god damn it i made that fire the the way we yeah. set up this camp is perfect and you just it's night nice, and this is what i think uh, uh, gravitates me towards wanting to do something like own a piece of land and build stuff is just like because every day you're working on something and you can literally see and feel your accomplishments um yes. yeah yeah like as as a performer and as an artist, like I can feel those things like on stage, but um, you know, then you have something crazy like a pandemic, and that take it takes that away from you, and then you're like, okay, well, what is any of this about, and what are other ways I can like self soothe? So I was building crap during the during the pandemic. I like I like painted a whole like a, a whole like uh, um, nativity scene. Not to say that I'm religious, but I thought it'd be fun. Um, yeah, and yeah, and just being able to do stuff and like. Do stuff with my hands and just feel there's something we like when tragedy strikes, um, going back to basics really resets us and makes us feel like accomplished individuals. Yeah, yeah, it really does. I definitely I mean, I'm an artist, so I definitely love to do things with my hands in general. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I, I do that and I, I I picked up guitar again. I hadn't played guitar in years, so I yeah. started playing guitar again. Yeah, that was it was really nice to kind of get back to who we are at the foundation for sure. So what kind you said you're an artist, what kind of art? Uh, so, uh, gosh, uh, I paint, I paint, I painted this. Okay. Um, so I paint, I do uh, miniatures. So I'll make like miniature little scenes. Okay. I, I make, are they based on um, anything or are they? Not really animals. Usually animals okay. and like, Nature. I like to do tiny little scenes of animals in nature usually. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. And so what's your medium for that? That's clay or what is that? Um, yeah, that's why I said it's kind of hard because I use clay, but I also use like wood. I work with glass a lot. Wow. Um, yeah, all kinds of things. If I can get my hands on it, I want to mess around with it. No kidding. Yeah. So what's like, uh, so I have like in my head, I, I, I want, I wanted to go to welding school during the pandemic. Cause I was like, I, I was like, if I could weld, then I, then I have all, I have everything. I got all the tools. Um, what's like, what's like a, what's a trade that you, that you'd want to take up that you think, um, is, is too difficult or there's like too many barriers. Oh, I would love to learn more about mechanics. Sure. And I feel like unless you actually pay to go to a school to do that, there's just so many barriers to that. And I guess I could just YouTube everything, but I would love, I would love to learn how to just work on a car in the middle yeah. of the day and just be hanging out there doing that all day. That sounds fun to me. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm exactly the same way. I like the, the, one of my biggest, reg well, I two regrets from high school. The, the two things that I think my high school needed was uh, like an auto shop. And um and like an Italian class and we didn't have either of those and that was like, like ah. those are the things I want like and I was a child yeah, nice. um that's okay yeah I, that's how I felt what were you saying about mechanic ing uh, is how I felt about like welding I didn't feel like I could just like, get a torch and just like wing it um are you somebody who, who can learn <laughs> through YouTube I'm not I don't find that that is a useful thing for me. Oh yeah. I, I like never look on YouTube to learn how to do things. Yeah. Either. I know I it's fair, but yeah. Oh, I have a buddy who literally he'll, he'll get on YouTube and he'll, and like, he'll be an expert by the end of the day. He like learned how to juggle on YouTube. He like learned how to do a backflip on a pogo stick on YouTube. I'm like, what is happening? But how I is this a thing? Cause I, I did 
apparently I'm not using it right. <laughs> I don't, I just, if, I'm not somebody who can learn that way. I don't know why. I don't know yeah. whether it's my, although I will, I will say that I did, I was working on the last car that I had and, um, and when I did, I would check, I would feel like I knew what I was doing, but I would watch somebody do it first on YouTube just to confirm that what I thought was right. Um, right. But that's similar. Yeah. Yeah, I did that. I did that too, for sure. I just, uh, I just put in a new stereo in my car, and I watched the video probably forty times. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> so you'd, but you'd, you'd be like at this point, you're like, wait, what the hell did he do? And then you gotta yeah. go find the spot again. And you're like, ah, I'm right, I'm right. Yep, yep. <laughs> wait, so what kind of car? Oh, I just have like a little Hyundai. Sure. Yeah. No, nothing special. I, I love just an an old piece of crap car. Yeah, what's your what would be your dream car? My dream car? Oh man, probably probably an Audi. Any, okay, any, just yeah. literally. Anything. Well, then <laughs> well, and then go backwards. If you want to be a mechanic, do you have like a do you have like a classic car that you have in your head? That's just so beautiful. Uh, classic Mustangs in the sixties. Okay, sure. Yeah, probably mid sixties. Yeah, hell yeah! All right, <laughs> let's do a quick lightning round. Um. I uh, uh I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give you like a like a, a an a, like an A or B, and you just All tell right. us which one it is. Uh, dogs or cats? Oh no, <laughs> um, dogs. <laughs> Wait, why did that one? For that was I started slow on that one. Why did that one offend know, you? Because I'm a huge animal person. Like I have two <laughs> cats, I have a dog, I have spiders, snake, rats. Like I have everything. Do you really? Yeah. Wait, how do you have, how do you, uh, spiders and rat? You didn't say snakes, did you? Yeah, I have a snake too. You have a snake yep. sitting next to a rat and then the rat watches you feed the snake mice? Well, well, I have, I have, well, right behind me, I have a hamster and below the hamster is a tarantula and below that is the snake. And then I have a spider in a different room and then I have rats in another room. <laughs> this is like Mrs. Piggly Wiggly. You're going to have to swallow yeah. all these things. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, we love animals. I love them. I, I would have more if I could, but I'm like, I gotta stop myself. Is there? I see. I don't know. So, are there? Um, are there any rules that says you can't have any of the stuff you have in there right now? Not to out yourself, but uh, no, no, like, not there, that I know of. Is there like an amount of snakes you can't have? I don't know. They literally did an apartment inspection today, and it's yeah. insane. So I think I'm okay. You didn't change anything. You didn't put a pillowcase over it. You just chill. Oh, nothing at all. So funny. It's yeah. so funny because like. The dogs are the most friendly and capable creature, and they're like they want to make rules about dogs. But like, if I think about it, all my neighbors could have tarantulas and snakes and hamsters, and there are no rules on my lease that says they can't have those things. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Eagles. I think anything. Fish tanks is probably like the only thing you can't have because of water damage. Is that right? Yeah, but like, yeah, for sure, I could just have my spider, and no big deal. Yeah. How long does a spider live? Oh, a couple of years. Um, the ones that we have, one of them will live like two years. The other one will live like five years. Oh, that's it. Yeah, not very. How long. do you? What are the signs of an aging spider? Um, they become an adult size, and then they slow down their molting, and eventually one day they're just not eating, not not molting anymore, and then you come in and they're dead. That's it. Just like that's me, it. on my way to on my way to puddle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they curl up on their back too. So, you know, if that's your way to go, go out like a spider. Yeah. Just I would love I would back. like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like that. As a, I just want I just want my body to be in a um what words do I want to use? I want it to be in an impressive sprawl if someone has to find me. Yes. Yeah. Whatever that means. Supposedly everything hardens when you're dead, so that's what I want. I want right. my arms and my legs and my cock just out. That's what I want. I just, just want to just, just solid. And the cock too, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way to go. Yeah. You don't want to, you don't want, you don't want to be turtling when they find you. That don't want, that's not what you want. No. no. Um, you don't want to be like Elvis going out or anything like that either. Yeah. I don't think I'd have a problem going out pooping, especially because like in the, in the thing that you explained was I would go out pooping, watching the sun come up. There you go. Okay, see, yeah. Well, when you put it like that, for sure, out Fine. in the middle of nowhere, all yeah. by yourself. Watch just sure. don't land in it. Just, there you go. Don't and supposedly, forward. you like you just push everything out anyway when you're dead. So if you already pushed it out, uh, 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 like voluntarily, 
You're good. There's nothing left. Pretty corpse. Yeah. Yeah. You fall, and then you just hopefully you roll down the hill far enough away from your poo. None of it lands on you. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't. You to the bottom and just beautiful pantless. That's my dream. (laughs) There you go. And they have to, and then they have to find me at sunset. (laughs) They're like, there he is, and it's just like rainbows and all the things. Yes. Um. Are there things that you are that people don't know about? Like, like I'm colorblind. That doesn't usually come up. Um, are there things that you, um, that are like, um, yeah, like secrets about you that people don't know? Secrets about me? Secrets about um, me. I don't really even have secrets, honestly. I'm like such an open book. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's really. I mean, look, I've seen your Twitter. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As much as I open my legs, I open the book too. Um, <laughs> right. So I guess secrets about me. Uh, no, I don't even. Honestly, I don't think I have like any. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's go back to the lightning round that I, that I never that I never fully played for you. I, but we got distracted yes. because of the animals. All right. Um. Let's see. Um. Roses or daisies? Um. Daisies. You know where I lean. It's in the shot. Um. Uh okay, uh, uh sushi or pizza? Oh, uh, pizza. Um sex in a car or sex in a public restroom? Oh, oh. That's a Both good, good one. Um Both good. probably public restroom. Okay. Okay, you sick <laughs> probably get the car more often. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, it is fun. I, I did have a period where I was like, we, we just have to have sex outside. That's what we're doing now. Um, <laughs> I, always yeah, put the, yeah. I always just put that accent on when I'm being just a dumb dude. I just, what's, what we got to do? We got to just have sex in the car all the time. Let's <laughs> put that stupid accent on. Um, all right, what else? Um, 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 uh, read it or see it on television? Ooh, um, gosh, um, probably see it on television. Okay. Um uh 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 what are their names? Shoot. Um um I can't believe I'm forgetting their names. Jo- uh, Joe Exotic or or the Flower Lady. Oh, um Carol Baskin. Oh, Joe forget. Exotic or Carol, Carol Baskin. Baskin? Yeah. Oh, um like whose side am I on? I'm I'm not adding stuff. I'm just... Oh, oh, um <laughs> I, I, You had to pick one. Joe Exotic. Joe He's Exotic. Crazy. That's I a good choice. Show. That's a good choice, yeah. Um, okay, what else? Um, eat too much or drink too much? Oh, gosh, eat too much? Um, die of heat, die of cold. Oh, gosh. Um, probably heat would be faster, I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, now I'm just getting morbid. This is like multiple yeah. death chats we've had. <laughs> Please don't die. Um <laughs> Okay, so what's what would be the best? Now we're off the landing round. What would be the best place for this? Um, where have you looked at for where you're gonna have the land thing? Like, what have you have you plotted this out? What's like a good climate? Where do you want to be? What are the things that are gonna make this thing successful? Yeah, um, I've looked at a couple places. Definitely New Mexico, um, in Colorado, a couple places, uh, California and Montana. Okay, yeah, you like you like that you like the Pacific Northwest part of it, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, for sure. I don't. I don't want natural disasters. I don't want humidity. So yeah, I'm pretty particular about it. New Mexico, though, um, and then uh, this could just be me being dumb. Um, it's it's a uh, it's like an arid place, right? It's not like um, it's not like a grower's paradise. Yeah, it's really not. You would have to do above ground growing. Is that what it is? You just you just put the correct soil above the ground. Yeah, wow. yeah, totally, totally. You got you have a lot of information. Oh yeah, I have been researching this for like a good solid two years. I okay, spend- let's go. Okay, so so what's the backyard look? Do you have how many acres do you have? Do you have a greenhouse? What are you gonna grow? Um, a greenhouse. Okay, yeah, gotta grow corn. Corn is a good staple. Corn potatoes um, and beans. Corn potato beans are great. Um, like yeah, green beans or like or like under uh, like like legumes. Like like, like yeah, like, like black you beans. Want- Black beans, things like that, for no sure. Kidding. And you got to grow all your vegetables. Squash, for sure. Squashes can be used for all kinds of things. Pumpkins. Um, and then I, I would want, like, broccoli, snap peas, things like that. Carrots, big fan of those. So 
And then fruit, I would have a huge area of fruit. I'm a huge fruit person. I eat fruit literally every day. So I would need a whole area just for fruit. Is there anything you don't eat right now? Um, no, no, I, and I'm willing to try like any food at any time. I'm kind of, I'm just like a try anything person. All okay. Would you do so, like a food challenge? Like if you were somewhere and they had one of those like uh, burgers, that's like, you have to finish this burger in under an hour. Would you do that? Um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Why not? So Let's the things on like my list food. to try are like, I've never had, um, I've never had like bowls balls. I've never had any, I've never eaten any balls. Um, and then I heard of the new one. There's a new one. It's not new. This is a dumb thing to say. There's a new. It's a new one. I just heard about. No, it's like a, it's like a culture, a cultural thing I didn't know about where they uh, they thinly slice a testicle. I think it's a sheep's testicle, and they don't even cook it. It's just raw sheep's testicle, almost like a caprese salad. I mean, you only live once. I would try it. <laughs> Yolo, baby. Yolo. Yeah. Um, and then there's that little there's that little embryo bird in the Philippines where it's like it started to make it. Oh, the duck something. It's called like a Yeah, I know what you're talking about. And you about. eat the embryo guy, yeah. The gooey gooey duck, isn't it? Isn't that what that it is? That sounds right. Uh, I think that's what it is. I like yeah. starting sentences I where I don't like, have a lot of information and I hope that the other person I'm talking to has more information than me so that I don't look stupid. I, I hope that I, I hope that I never have to try that. Um, okay. Because it, it might put me up to the test of I'll try anything. I might, yeah. I might not try that. Yeah. Well, so if you, yeah, if you can take a stance, like, I don't know. So I think, I think I'm going to transition into vegetarianism later in life and not like make a thing about it. Just like just there's more stuff in the food and I can do more with the food. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Plus if I name my goat, I'm going to have a hard time eating him. Yeah, yeah, and I'm definitely going to be naming the chickens and the goats because I'm an animal person. I'm going to get attached to them, and, I mean, we are going to have to eat them, but I'm not going to want to buy yeah, them. Yeah, I don't like, think you have to eat them. I really don't. I don't think you have to eat them. I, I, I haven't been challenged to having a vegetarian, um, like, protein conversation with anybody recently, but I have all the ammo ready. I'm like, I'm like, what are the biggest animals on the planet? What are they eating? Plants, exactly. Let's go. Um, so... <laughs> Um, Just by the, the way, planets. by the way, um, uh, ducks. If you're thinking about chickens, think about ducks. I'm, uh, I've, I, I was very pro chicken, but I've become very pro duck recently. I've been eating uh, only duck eggs for like a year. Whoa, okay. it's like life changing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're so good. Oh, plus, wow, okay. I'm gonna have to try some duck eggs. Plus, there are so few. Um, like we're not uh, uh, mass farming ducks. So the eggs are just healthier. So that might have a lot to do with why that's what it is. But because yeah. uh, because it's like the ducks are most likely eating what they're supposed to be eating for their species. And so the eggs come out nice. Um, yeah. So check oh, out man. check out ducks. Yeah, My favorite. I uh, so, not need an excuse to get ducks, but you just gave me one. So. Yeah. 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 And they have personality. Uh, ducks have personalities. They have this one called a runner duck. It's a blue runner duck, and it's like silly. It looks. It's like up high, and they're very. Um, when there's a bunch of them, they're very like uh, like like ducks and stuff, so, and like chickens and all that stuff is like like anything can kind of like come and kill it. You know, like a hawk will get it or whatever. But the blue yeah. runner duck. Because it's not like low and weird, it like it like has like an aggression and it's scary in a way that a duck's not supposed to be because most of its body is upright. Um, but also, I, so I I just think I just think it would be fun. I, like in my head, it has to be like chickens, ducks, um, like turkeys and geese, like ev- like get them all. For sure, yeah, like a whole. I want like a whole uh, army of birds. Yeah, basically. can you eat a peacock egg? Is that a oh. thing? Um. I don't know. You know, have though, to Google I, that. I have like I have a neighbor that has peacocks. I yeah. should totally go ask them. Yeah. Can I ask him for a peacock egg and then get ostriches? Well, you're gonna be in a place if you're in those areas. I think you can have all those things. Um, oh yeah. Oh, I would totally do ostrich eggs. That would sure. be funny if that would be yeah. funny if that's all you had. You didn't have any. If you didn't even have goats, you, it was just all birds. All just birds bird. that don't. All flightless birds. <laughs> I think that's the. No, gra- I think. I definitely want goats because I got I've got to get those those frightened goats. You know the ones that just like seize up and fall over. Right, that's for me goats. when that's me when I'm gonna die. That's what I'm gonna look like. Yeah, yeah, like a ah. like a goat. Done. Ah. Yeah, that's exactly how I'm gonna die. That's what I described. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but then are you gonna scare your dog? You're gonna scare your goats? No, but they get scared over everything, so it'll be fine. <laughs> 
Wait, so what do you know about what do you know about uh, um about like raising fruit? Do you know like do you know how to like make a fruit tree? Grow um, fruit yeah, I do actually. I even know how to graph fruit tree. So really, could, uh, I could like make my own kind of fruit. Tree. So what does that mean? So you like you can put like an apricot you can put like an apricot branch on like an apple tree and like a thing. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So you can have like the tree of life in your backyard. Yeah, for sure. You know, somebody already invented that. It has like twenty fruits on it. There's it's like a protected tree. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. Some guy did it like I don't know, like a hundred years ago or something. You have to send me this link, so we'll put it in. We'll put it in the in the comments. So yeah, for sure. When you do that, what happens? You so am I getting like an orange from one branch and an apple from another, or once they're grafted, it just makes this other combo fruit? Yeah. So the guy who made that tree, it actually each branch has its own fruit. Okay. Yeah, and it's all just powered by one one like stump of a tree central so, trunk one cent i think it was like an apple tree to start yeah with. yeah i think it's really cool yeah, i want to do it for sure i want to see if it's you know I, I would go crazy with it all the craze yeah yeah it it is weird it, i don't know why my mind is so blown by nature i think i think we just grow up taking everything for granted like i just hit the pocket of life where I take everything. Like I think my parents remember a time when they like had to go in the backyard and like choose a, a rabbit and then they'd hand it to their grandmother who would then kill it in front of them. Um, but I didn't grow up in that era. Right. And so like, I'm just far enough away from immigration where I just didn't know that I didn't even like, even the way that oranges come off a of tree, it's like blows my mind. Sometimes they're literally on the end of the, of the branch. It's the last yeah. thing in the branch. It's like, it blows my mind. I'm like, how is this even real? This whole place looks like, feels like Willy Wonka. Um, so the more I learn, the more it's like, it like, it like impresses me. And every time like my, one of my plants like grows a new leaf, I'm like, how is this possible? Um, <laughs> so it's just a weird, it's a weird, fun, uh, 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 like, like new thing. That's, that's, uh, yeah. was never, I didn't think it was a part of my life. And now it's a huge part of my life. Like now yeah, I can't even envision sure. a life where I'm not growing something in the backyard. Yeah, yeah, that's how I feel too. Like I can't envision a life where I'm not where I am not doing something with my own hands where I can yeah. see that like you said earlier, like every day you get to see your own progress of that versus, you know, you go to a nine to five job, you clock in, you clock out, you really never see your life kind of changing. And yeah, yeah I wanna see that every day and I wanna I wanna have that effect on it for sure. Yeah. Cause it's, cause then cause then what happens is all the little things that like cause you to snap um aren't important anymore yeah they're totally not yeah and yeah that's so, what that's, that's definitely what i want just to to not yeah there's those few months when i was out just traveling and living on the land it was like i just really didn't have any worries i mean until you know until bills started coming back when your money starts to run a little low <laughs> you're like why you're like why did we agree to be part of a capitalist society what was our plan what did yep, we do yep. Wait, so why was this a good idea? It's not. It's like, well, we know we know now why, because it doesn't serve us. Uh, it serves everyone else. The OK, yeah. wait, so living off the land, what did that look like? Like, so you drive somewhere, you set up camp. How long are you camped? And then how do you what are you? What do you mean living off the land? Um, yeah, so we would just um, yeah, we camp for like anywhere from five days in one place to like a, two weeks or so. We just went around like national forests. And uh, you could, yeah, we just would uh, bring like a very small cooler of just like a few necessities you'd need to cook with. And then mostly we just ate things that we didn't need to refrigerate or anything. And, yeah. and just kind of, yeah, lived out there, cooked everything on a campfire and, you know, hung out in like hammocks and in the tent yeah. and stuff. So, it was, yeah, it was just really chill. Did you like forage? Did you, were you like, so I have this app on my phone now that tells me what every plant is. So like I was, I found yeah. like garlic mustard the other day and I was like, should I just grow? Should I just eat this? It's just like in the woods. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's apps that do that. They have like identified mushrooms, identified flowers, leaves. Yeah, we had all those. And have you eaten sure. a mushroom that you didn't know about? Have you eaten one off the ground that you didn't know about five minutes before? No, I would not eat a mushroom that I don't know. About. It seems That's scary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's there's a lot of mushrooms out there that could that could really do a lot of damage to you. So yeah, I would never eat a mushroom if I didn't know what it was. Yeah, the uh, that was literally I think the that was the premise of was it Into the Wild? Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that movie. <laughs> um, okay, so so you'd be so then literally that was like 
And I think that's everybody's like idea of the thing. Just go do something. Just go do like a um, a road trip until the money runs out. Um, yeah. But with with things like OnlyFans and and your ability to sell your own content, um, if you were to rethink it, could you create a life where you're just constantly uh, traveling, touring, doing the thing, and then somehow finding a way to fund it through your work? Um, yeah, you know, that was kind of like a goal that I really wanted was to be able to go like, you know, state to state and just kind of either do collabs or, or do filming or whatever. Um, but that yeah, it does cost a lot of money to do that. So yeah. if you're, you know, in a state, you're not making any money in that state, you're not going to make it to the next one. So, um, I would love to keep doing that. And I think that it would be a really fun thing to try again, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to try it again. If not, I guess I can always fly. Yeah, it's a, well, yeah, it's a bad, it's a bad time for gas. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very. So wait, what bad. was the RV you were running around in? Did you, and do you still have it? No, oh, no, we sold the RV. No kidding. Yeah. Did you? Uh, were you able to like? So were you able to like make money out of it? Like, because you probably ended in a in a good you. So you bought it like a used market that wasn't much, and then you sold it at a yeah. used market that was like crazy. Right. Yeah. No, we luckily we broke pretty even. So okay. I got very lucky on that. That's a that's a huge win. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was better than losing money, that's for sure. Yeah. That's a huge win. Did the whole thing basically it was like it was like uh it was like you rented it. Um and you know it was- feels like that, like when in my memory it kind of feels like it wasn't even ours because we had it for such yeah. a short time. Um, uh, but yeah, we sure we sure used our time wisely. That's great. Yeah. Can I have your life? Can I just have your life? Um, that sounds fantastic. I okay, mean, so what, you got to take a lot of dick. <laughs> well, I would go maybe a different route, but let's talk about that. <laughs> How much dick could it could a woodchuck chuck? Um, let's talk about your content. What like? Okay, so you have OnlyFans. You have all the things. Where are you finding the most success? Um, where are you finding? Where would you like uh, uh, ideally send a fan? Um, and. and and what is coming up that we should be looking forward to? Um, so I have, gosh, for like the next six weeks, every weekend is booked doing a collab. Great. So I'm gonna have a lot of stuff coming out. Um, that's definitely gonna be on my OnlyFans. Every now and then I'll post on my Pornhub, um, but I definitely keep up on my OnlyFans and just for fans the most. What did you do when they tried to take OnlyFans away from us? Um. I was very grateful that I had been uploading everything to just for fans. Okay. Uh, but just in case there was uh there was a guy who was helping everybody back up their only fans to add it to just for fans, just in yeah. case it would crash out. So I did, um, I did pay somebody to help me do that just in case. So, yeah. Yeah. That's I was, rough... I was ready just in case. Yeah. It's a rough world. Like when, when, when everything is sort of digital, it feels weird. It's a weird, uh, especially as somebody who's like, I think I'm a borderline hoarder. So like I have these tendencies that don't make any sense. Like I just got rid of DVDs last year and I haven't had a DVD player for five years. So like I have this weird thing. So then like not having hard copies of things freaks me out so much. And so then with the digital thing, I always want to like quadruple and like quintuple back everything up. Yes. Yeah. I'm the same way. And then when OnlyFans went down, I backed it up and I got myself like a terabyte hard drive and I back everything up. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Just you never know. <laughs> and they gave it and they gave us that scare. They gave us that scare that every social media outlet has given us where it's like, oh, yeah. we're just not going to play ball anymore. Yeah. With the thing. I mean, Twitter did it too, like a couple yeah. times in the last two or three years. Yeah. They, yeah. It scared us all a few times. Yeah, Twitter is t- Twitter remains to be one of the only um like like sex positive um nudity friendly. Is that a is that an expression? Um, yeah, platforms. It does. Yeah, and I don't even use Instagram. I I know I should. It's just that I don't really want to play their game. It's uh, too many flags. I'm a comedian who doesn't flags. show my 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 ass very much. Um, <laughs> And I and I'm getting flagged at a rate that doesn't make any sense. Just just associated right. with this project. Um, yeah. yeah, it's as long as if you're associated with that, um, they'll continue to flag you. You can keep creating accounts, but then I just was like, I'm not going to go through that. And I watch other people do it every day, 
all the time on Twitter being like, ah, my Instagram's gone yeah. again. I'm just not gonna mess it blows with my that. mind when somebody who's got like 5 million, 10 million, 3 million, like they're at those numbers that I think we all started thinking were like these godly, like, um, things that we need to get to. Right. So it's like, okay, once I get right. to a million, then I can monetize this and all these sorts of things and nobody can touch me and they're going to know I'm real and I'm going to be uh, certified yeah. and verified yeah. and all the things, but they're just taking those away too. So like, it don't, nothing matters anymore. Oh, it, yeah, it really doesn't. And it's, and anybody can, can keep doing it too. So. And then, uh, and then, and then add to that, the, um, the, the, the crypto mining uh, scams and all the other ones. Have you yeah. gotten these people? No. Like people are people will will message you about uh the uh, I, people's accounts will start getting hacked by crypto people. Have you seen these ones? Oh, but I keep getting messages like that all the time. I just ignore them, but I, I've seen them. Yeah, so like lay, like I don't want to say lay people. Usually I say civilians. I don't know why lay people sounds good and terrible, but lay, lay people people that like are not really on Instagram for any reason. Um, they will get their account hacked, and then like the what the posts will be for a couple weeks. Because there's, I think what happened was the crypto people figured out that like, um, that like these people use their accounts so little that no, they'll not even notice. So that they start like putting up pictures of like new cars that they fake bought. And then like saying to like, oh, give your money to like Johnny. He's going to turn your $3,000 into $10,000 in crypto mining. So that's, right. that's what I've seen in the, in the, again, again, this is a false term, but the, the lay Instagram community. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're all more savvy than that. But yeah, no, I don't think you should be fighting um, the Instagram game. No. Yeah, it's not. It's add one not, to your arsenal, add more. Pinterest. I don't think I don't think Pinterest is is uh, is flagging people at the rate. Really? I haven't even heard if people are moving to Pinterest, but that would be really funny if we're, if we're all going to be great. If, yeah, if, if Pinterest is a vision board, all the dicks I want. <laughs> How fun. Yeah, I'm just I'm just envisioning the No, but they have Pinterest added a piece. They added a piece where you can do stuff. I don't know, but I don't know what their uh Yeah, I don't know what their their um uh, uh what's it called? Their uh restriction looks like. There really yeah. just needs to be a like a, just like a an actual nudity Instagram. I don't know why that doesn't exist. Yeah, there should be. I mean, maybe Twitter. Put our goddamn maybe heads together. Put our goddamn yeah, my Twitter yeah my Twitter because I follow everybody in the industry my Twitter is like unopenable in public that's where I'm at. Oh yeah, for sure. If I even accidentally open it, I know there's gonna be some nudity right there. Like ha, ha, I'm on a plane. Oh, oh, that's not helping. I'm just gonna keep scrolling through more more dicks. That's just- <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. Well, uh, let's see. Okay, so wait, what is your OnlyFans? Um, do you, you said, you said OnlyFans is your main one. You're just, just yeah. fans is the other one you said? Just, just four fans. Four fans. Yeah. Uh, tell us those links. Cool. Uh, that is same as my Twitter. So it's XXX Brad Party. And everything is that, do you have the, do, were you able to get that handle everywhere? Yeah, actually. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, uh, I, the I, one and only. The one and only. The, it is, it is funny. Like, uh, um, I don't know why, like, like, Porn names for a while were so like derivative of things that like sometimes I find like eight people with the same name from yeah. uh, and it's like by era. So there's like somebody like functioning from like 78 to 85. There's these 10, 10 year eras like like windows. Um, when do you think you're going to stop creating content? Not to scare everyone. Um, and how soon are you uh, um, from like just um throwing soil on top of a useless soil, putting worms in it and growing food. Um, uh-huh. When that happens, will you still be creating content? Like what are these transition points? Um, yeah, I think for like a year of making a homestead, I would have to probably not make content because I'll be so busy. Uh, but I don't feel like I ever want to stop. Great. <laughs> so yeah, so no scare there. I don't, I don't feel like I'm ever going to stop. I want to just keep climbing to the top. Um, so yeah, and like, I I think that um, I think that there's a good chance uh, the the porn industry is changing right now. It really is, and I think that I think that over the next few years, with people doing the cam and the way that they do it, it's going to continue to change. And I really want to be a part of that. So I just I right. don't see myself stopping. I love that. I love that. Yeah, there there was. I'm try, I was trying to think of uh, well after right as soon as I posed the question, I was trying to think of reasons why. 
people left the industry. And um, a lot of those reasons don't really exist anymore. They um, don't, yeah. And, and, and a lot of the pressures that were uh, imparted on people from outside sources get removed when you get to make your own and make and own your own content. Um, and when you let fans vote on what it is that they want to see. And uh, oddly enough, I don't know if other people feel the way that I feel, but um, performers that just f- dropped off the face of the planet um, and then we never heard of them again. I'm like sad about that. Um, I'd right. like to see where my favorite porn performers were. The people that were my age, I'm, I'm almost 40, and the people that are my age, um, right around 35, 36, just sort of slowly started dropping off. Right. And the only what fans that them? started. Are they okay? and they're, <laughs> yeah, they're like, well, honestly, they're probably like, they, they're, they're doing what we want to do, and they're just like living in like Missouri, and they like have a family and a garden now. And because they took that three year gap and didn't get on the run with the OnlyFans and all the other self content, uh, I think they didn't think that they could keep that that thing going. Um, it's it's just it's so strange. I mean, I've only been running this podcast since 2017, I think, I believe it was the first episode. And the amount that's changed in even that period of time is astonishing. Yeah. Um, and it's just going to keep changing. Just yeah. Like, so dramatic. It gets so sm- it gets smarter. It gets um, it get the the conversations get uh, more open about how we're handling things. And oddly enough, with a lot of the organizations that are happening now, some of the conversations that we never thought were possible are starting to be possible. Um, like when it comes to laws and government and et cetera. Um, yeah. So, yeah, definitely. What a what a what a um, what a far reaching episode. We talked about poop. We talked about death. And now we're talking about politics. We've done it all. That's the trifecta. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We, yeah, we touched on everything. Definitely. Let's see. Let me see where we at. I think I've taken. I think I've taken far too much of your time. Yes, I have. Uh, so one more time, give us all the ways to follow you. Um, how do we pay for your porn? Um, and what's what are we? What's the? You said you said we should be looking for these collabos, but what's like? Yeah. Um, what do you want the most from your fans right now? Um, most of my fans, I would love more interaction from my fans. A lot of my fans seem really shy to interact with me. So, like, let me know what what do you guys want? What do you want from me? Um, so I could I could bring that to the to the uh, to the scene. I guess you know. Great, I love and that. Then, um, uh, find me. All of my handles are always going to be the three X's. Brad Party. P A R D E A R D E E E. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you to my guest uh, for being here. This is the Sexy People Podcast. Apologies again uh, for myself, your host, for the period of time where we did not make episodes. Uh, we're not doing that anymore. 